This video covers number of LoRa Mishtastic boards. Uh, when I was starting, it was quite a number of them, and it was difficult to figure out which one to use when. I uh, decided to record this video. Starting, of course, from LilyGo T-Beam, one of the first ESP32 based board being released, which has um, internal small GPS inside and a slot for 18650 battery micro USB charger and uh, PS RAM and it's a permanent storage for messages that used in store and forward mesh testing feature and basically when you've been away and you come to the board and it can replay all the messages that's been going on on RF this one is just the same one only it's in 433 MHz version and I use it as a LoRa appearance based tracker Next time we really go release smaller version, just the same board, doesn't have a GPS and a smaller size. For quite a while these um, LilyGo boards were quite popular until Haltech came in and with their ESP32 version 3 CPU and it was become quickly quickly become one of the best selling boards due to its primarily due to its cheaper price and the newer CPU which mostly different in uh, small back fixes and uh, Bluetooth version upgraded from 4.2 to 5. That's how they look and they ship and they sometimes ship with the case as well. One thing to one thing to notice the different is this small Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna. In Heltec products they use coil. In uh, Lilico products, they use uh, this special type of antenna that's, that's uh, soldered on a board. With, with coil based, um, a lot of complaints that the range is not very good, but I guess if people press on it hard or just twist it, then of course antenna will be out of, out of tune for uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth frequency. Later, Heltec released wireless stick light on wireless sticks. It's just a smaller and cheaper board that um, either have smaller screen or don't have screen at all. Heltec also released wireless tracker that um, has slightly larger GPS board uh, but smaller screen and doesn't have a battery slot to in. You have, but you have you can solder it yourself. One thing I didn't mention, some T-beams they don't come with a, with a OLED. You just have to buy one of them and just solder them in yourself. Later on, Lilygo upgraded their ESP32 CPU to version 3 in their T3 S3 board, which has quickly become one of the best selling boards due to presence of permanent storage on board. In in version 1.2 boards, they even added two more quick connectors for keyboard or possibly telemetry board like BME 280. Coming back to boards for solar applications such as Raspberry Pi RP2040 with a SX1262 RF board inside. And um, of course, your king of solar. Rack 4630. Starting from Raspberry, I'm trying to build a solar node. Basically connected these three one allegedly one watt panels. They're about 10 centimeters long and producing a cloud today about 10 milliamps. So while Raspberry actually consumes uh, 30 milliamps in standby. And this is a charger model I use to charge battery, and that's not going anywhere. And one thing to to note that Raspberry Pi as a node uh, will not report uh, telemetry because it doesn't have any uh, current measuring or voltage measuring device on board. So if it's going to be a solar node, so you would know the battery status on it. 
Now looking at rack, where 4630 is actual NRF chip uh, and 1907 is a baseboard or motherboard that has slots um, that, you, that you plug in your telemetry and weather and other sensors. Also it has a plug for battery and solar plug and it will help uh, charge your battery via solar panel. You don't need a separate uh, adapter for charging adapter like in a Raspberry case. Also comes with a um, um, lower antenna and a larger Bluetooth antenna. Uh, I have to mention that this NRF is probably the only one chip that can do over-the-air firmware upgrades. So if it's on a tower, so you don't need to climb it. And of course, main selling point is 9 milliamps power consumption and standby for this board, which is making it ideal for solar applications. Uh, but uh, speaking of solar, if you take any of this ESP32 based device and put it into power savings mode, the power consumption drops from 100 milliamps to 30. Very similar to Raspberry Pi, and uh, I managed to run one of these ESP32 boards on this uh, 20 centimeter wide solar panel and a 1000 milliamp battery and they run fine even on cloudy days. Okay, I hope that was useful and I will see you next one.